Today we are doing chapter one of Spires and Hildegard. Now this is kind of like a choose your own adventure type game. Uh, as you'll see when I start the playthrough, there's not a whole lot of setup and I'll explain the rules kind of as I go along. But this is a, a recent game. It's not, I think it's like a sequel to regular Spires End, but it's not like an expansion to it, right? They're separate. So if you only want Hildegard, you only have to get Hildegard. Um, but one important note before we dive into this, uh, this will have spoilers, right? Obviously, it's going to have uh, spoilers because I'm going to show you the cards. I'm going to show you kind of what uh, certain paths lead to. So if you don't want to get spoiled, well, then maybe you shouldn't watch this video. But this will spoil a bit, but there are a ton of branching paths. So this isn't like everything being ruined for you, just a small uh, part of the game. So uh, before you watch this video, if you could do me a huge favor, make sure you scroll down, hit the like button, hit subscribe, leave me a comment. Uh, all that engagement really helps the channel out, and I hope you enjoy this playthrough. But the way the game works essentially is it just comes in a box like this, right? Simple enough. There's a bunch of cards. You have to unwrap these, obviously, but it, you begin here. Then it goes chapter two, chapter three, chapter four. There are some small expansion stuff, um, and I think you just plop them in. That's kind of it. But uh, we have some markers for, like, I think it's 10 times gold is what this is. We have some other, like, general markers. I don't know if they're supposed to be used for specific things, but I'm not. We have big dice, and we have a bunch of uh, smaller dice. And then I just have a, a tray up here to roll them in. And, uh, yeah, I guess we'll run through really quick how the game works because um, it's pretty simple. But essentially... Uh, as far as our rules go, uh, setup is you place the story deck in front of you. Okay, cool. There it is. Uh, and then uh, make sure there's enough space and have all the dice and the markers nearby. And that's it. That is the entirety of setup. And then kind of as you go into things, um, it'll explain the story. It will get more into it, all that fun stuff. We'll get into the anatomies of cards as we kind of go through it. But the big thing to know is, is kind of how things work. Um, as we flip over cards, it's going to tell us, like, pull other cards, make decisions, make story decisions, all that fun stuff. Uh, the dice will go over how they work and all that fun things. Um, and the only weird thing is how you shoot targets. It's kind of a weird thing, but basically you check the statistics of everything. Uh, you roll all your shot dice, which are these. And you can finesse a shot, which basically means you would um, essentially roll these and you commit one of these and then you roll all the rest of it. And then like you commit something else and like that's a bullseye, for example, which we'll explain later. And then you try to like commit more. And then you can roll um, what's known as a wild shot die. And that'd be like an extra bullseye you would get, or it'd be like a miss or something. Um, so we'll get into all of that and what that means. The dice are tier one, tier two, tier three, tier four. So I'll push those off to the side a little bit. And that's really it. That's that's really the entirety of the game. Um, it's a pretty basic game. We will reference the rules a decent amount so that we, as we go through it, you kind of uh, get the feel of it, get the hang of it and whatnot. Um, but at any point, if you ever have questions on anything, um, you know, just, just let me know. All right, cool. So... You begin here, and it shows this symbol that there are three uh, little icons in the back here. So I'll show you really fast what that what that looks like. Uh, reveal one of the three starting cards, right? So you have one, two, three. Um, doesn't really matter. Well, they're all slightly different. Um, well, this one has a mark on it. We'll do that one, and as you discard them, um, you just kind of go through. Um, I think you're supposed to discard them face down, but I don't like putting them out of order because that's like a whole thing. So, all right, this one is called the Silver Cap. So, finally, you found something nestled at the base of the uh, of the rotten tree trunk is a silver cap mushroom. You're no expert forager, but this could be a good find. As you reach down to harvest rare fungus, someone approaches. Hildegard, thank goodness I found you. It's your first assignment: a delivery to Seacrest for the Baroness. Uh, Avind, another member of the Messengers Guild, hands you the package. I have half a mind to take it myself. I wish I was going to Seacrest. So you gain three gold. So we'll use these like little golden cubes as gold. All right, we'll put that in a little inventory area um, off here to the side. And then uh, we get two feats of marksmanship, which we'll explain in a second. And then uh, place this mushroom in your inventory and then pull cards 88, 89, and 90. So we'll do that really fast. So we go, go down. And to pull means you just kind of take it out and put it aside for a second. Um, and reveal is something slightly different. So 88, 89, 90. All right, we can look at these really fast. 
basically it is our card it's a mysterious package and it's our slingshot which is like our main uh form of attack hey diamond's edge how you doing so we're gonna put hildegard which is our main character card right there basically you can see on it that it just has a bunch of uh, slots right there we'll explain what that is in a second um but we do do two feats of marksmanship so that's gonna be we're gonna put two cubes one two on here to show feats of marksmanship now we get to basically choose mercantile or breakfast which we want to do um, and we pick one and then we put this card in our in our um, area under here is a silver cat mushroom it's like the item that we have so one thing that we'll do is we will put it or i'm sorry we won't do that yet we'll put the mysterious package in our inventory put slingshot and pebbles in here and put it in our inventory it also shows on the bottom of this card that we have um access to a black die that's what that little black square means um, which is this shot wild dice right here um, so that'll be important later oops all right so we could pick to either go to the uh, mercantile or we can go eat breakfast Diamond's Edge, if you're there, what, what should we do? Should we go to breakfast or go to the, the mercantile? Um, as we wait for an answer, um, one of the things I'll talk about is the, the positive stat effects here. Um, you can see they each have stars next to it for hone, wild, bullseye, reset, redo, all that stuff. Uh, that's where this stuff right here comes into effect. So, Karakai says neither. Well, then our journey is at an end. We have, we have, we have lost. We have not delivered our package, and thus we have lost. Eat the world. That sounds like breakfast to me. All right, so we'll pick two. <laughs> All right, so you would just go to number two, which is this one right here. It's the top card for number two. And then we reveal it. So it is the Hungry Hog. Uh, before embarking into the wild, you decide a hearty breakfast at the Hungry Hog is in order. You haven't eaten since yesterday, and your stomach is growling. Uh, Farifale... The barkeep asks you what you'll have. So we can have dry fruit or nuts, porridge and coffee, and bread and buttermilk. Does anyone have a preference of what we should have? I'm thinking uh, bread. Like bread is filling. Bread's probably good. And it's also one I haven't done yet, so I don't know uh, <laughs> where it goes. I did the coffee one, so I kind of know where that one leads a little bit. So let's do the bread one. Uh, bread is card five. So the other ones, I believe, just get thrown away as you reveal. So card five, eat the bread. <laughs> card five. All right. Fresh air. Uh, breakfast has left you feeling ill. Oh, that's not good. Um, you step out back for some fresh air. Then suddenly bursts of sunlight make you woozy. Roll the black wild shot dice. All right. So let's roll that. All right, it's a bullseye. Uh, buckled over sick, you spot a coin in the dirt. You gain one gold. Hey! We're rich. We're rich. We're up to four gold. Um, basically, if there's anything else, it doesn't end well. You see Hannah, the owner of the Hungry Hog, struggling with a large uh, wiggling burlap sack. Should you ask her what's in the bag or just walk off breakfast? I wonder what's in the bag, right? I want to be like Brad Pitt. It's like, what's in the box? But you know, with a with a bag instead. So I think I think I want to go bag route. So what is that? Seven? Let's go bag. All right. So here we go. The gig. Um, okay. So her face lights up. A dozen leaf fighter saplings. That's weird. Uh, you're going to get some fights over in the bar with a few wagers. She pulls a small plant out of the bag. Uh, it has a nasty little mouth that snaps and bites wildly. You're a messenger now, yeah? I need to get one of these named, one of these to a man named Rolf at the atrium in Crow Falls. You want the gig? So, sure, we can do it, right? Do the extra work. Maybe we get something out of it. Uh, a bite from that is fatal. Ooh, that doesn't sound good. Place the leaf uh, sapling in our inventory. I mean, like, it probably won't kill us, right? Maybe? I don't know. I think we take it. Because maybe that gives us something. And maybe we can unleash it on someone else. Right? So I think we're going to... I think we're going to take it. So we'll place this in our inventory. 
And then we get card number 10. All right, card number 10. Holy cow, okay, Fast Passage, right, 10? This is 10? Yes, yeah, 10. All right, so Hannah, which way would you take to the coast? Hickory Hills would be the best. It's just cornfields. The, the pass through Pointy Peaks is a bit shorter, but there are bears and the bridge at Peak Falls has swept away with the rains. I'd avoid it if you can. It's good to know. Either way, the paths meet up at Blister Bridge. From there, it's straight shot to Crow Falls. Best enter town on the south side, less security. Try and catch a ride on the riverboat to the coast. Beware of river pirates. Uh, Madline the Mad in particular. Come to think of it, keep an eye out around there as well. There's been reports of cloaked figures roaming the streets. You thank her for the advice. I feel like this is like a terrible like place to go. <laughs> All right, we got number 16 now. All right, 15. All right, so 16. Moving right along. Haven't fought anything yet. So as you make your way through the outskirts of town, you find Bartle, a pathetic fellow weeping on the lonely street corner. I don't suppose you're a good shot with that slingshot, he asks. Uh, shoulders shrugged. You're hesitant. There's something off with this guy, but curiosity is killing you. You're darn tootin' the best. And then it's just for looks. I guess I, I'm going to do 23, right? I'm going to show this, this guy how skillful I am. He's going to be like, wow, you're so Sweet Laura, why do you ask? You re reply reluctantly. I was about to give my sweet Laura a ring. Uh, we're destined to be married, but a pesky jackalope took it. They're attracted to this sort of thing. I had dropped it, and well, look. He points over to the bushes. Sure enough, there's a jackalope with a ring hanging out of its mouth. You rarely see jackalopes. These are not many in this area. Cute little guys. I will reward you handsomely. The Viking sounds like a Texan. Uh, yeah, no, it's 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 a cross crossbreed kind of thing. <laughs> All right, I'll take care of it. It's bad luck to shoot a jackalope. Is, is that true? Is it true that it's bad luck to shoot a jackalope? I don't know. I think we'll take care of it, right? We'll get rid of this thing. It's the least we could do. All right, so 24 is our pesty, a pesky jackalope. So we have to go over what the different symbols on it mean. Uh, excuse me. So this is the bullseye limit, which is the number of bullseyes you must uh, achieve to defeat this. The top right is basically you get like a bonus reward for doing more, right? So if I hit one bullseye, I win. Um, if I, uh, uh, you know, get two bullseyes, I um, get like a bonus basically. So accuracy is the number of dice you can use. So right now you can use two dice and sets means the amount of times you can redo all your dice rolls essentially right so we talked about how like you can roll two dice let's say and then well this would be a bullseye but let's say um i rolled that for example then i can redo one and that would have been a fail um if you were to have like two sets then you could basically try again after the fact and, and try rolling again but if it's only one set it's like a one shot and that's it under here or all the dice that like are available to use to make a bullseye, which we'll explain in a second. Uh, the jackalope sees you, uh, the ring twinkling in its mouth. It looks like it's about to dart away. Like a seasoned hunter, you line up and shoot uh, to to the shot and take a breath. And either you hit it or you miss it. Uh, and the, the stuff underneath it is rewards, and we'll get into that in a little bit. So this is what we're taking on. So the way that you make a bullseye um, is there's a couple ways, right? You can either have dice set up like that right where it's like two halves of a bullseye make a bullseye um this is also allowed to be a different color so it's like a black and a white one that's okay uh because it still makes oops let's get that focused um that still makes the shape of the bullseye the color has to do with other stuff in the game right so you could do that you can also have a, a circle and a dot like that which also makes a bullseye or you can do it this way, which this would also make a bullseye, right? So there's a couple of different ways to do it, um, but you need to do uh, do it one of those ways. On this card, basically it says any way you do it is fine. doesn't really matter. All right, so we're going to take our two dice. We're going to roll. So we rolled um, half of a bullseye and a blank. So we can keep one. So we'll keep the half. We get to re-roll the other one. 
Uh, so we missed, right? Nothing works, but we can use our wild die, right? This basically has a bullseye on it or a miss, and that's it, or a bunch of blanks. All right, so nothing happened, so we never actually hit this thing. So we are actually a terrible shot and did not succeed. So 32 is our miss. Oops. All right. So we can now break for the bush. Um, the jackalope darts off into the bush. No, Laura's ring. The man falls to his knees, wailing like a baby. This is all your fault. You lost it. I mean, it's not really my fault, right? You shouldn't have probably lost in the beginning, I'm going to guess. But, you know, okay, whatever. Just blame me. That's cool. Uh, this is all your fault. You lost it. Uh, the red in his face intensifies. His head uh, looks like it's about to pop. Where do you think you're going? And you can either attack it or you can run. Before advancing to card 52, roll a wild shot dice. If it's a bullseye, pull card 65. Um, do, we, do we attack it again? Or do we run? I don't know what the outcome of either of these are. I say we attack, right? What are the odds that we lose again? Not great, right? Maybe, maybe we win. So let's go. Let's go. Let's pull a card, card 49. Oh, I have to fight the guy. Oh no, he doesn't. He's he's who I have to fight. This is like a choose your own adventure game. Exactly, it's exactly like a choose your own adventure game. Um, the old one was, or not the old one. The original was like this too. Um, it was a little more complicated, I think. Uh, this is like a simplified version of it. But yeah, choose your own adventure. This is I played this game twice before this, and so far this is nothing like the first two times. Um, well, that's not true. It's like very vaguely similar because it's still like introductory stuff. Um, but it's still like a much different story. All right, so he has the bullseye thing, which is exactly the same. Accuracy means I can use four dice, which is nice. Two sets means I can re-roll two whole sets, but I have to only roll... Uh, I can only get a bullseye with the black semicircle and the white semicircle. And um, let's see. If I roll those dice, those four dice over on the right-hand side in particular, that's how we get our bonus. Do I have to roll it in one shot? Is that how that works? I can't remember that. Um... I'm, 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 yeah, I think you have to roll that combination in particular, if I remember correctly. So. Look, to be fair, I'm not, I don't, I like to think of me not as killing him, but just like beating him upside the head so he doesn't remember anything and doesn't hate me. Does that count? Is that friendlier? <laughs> All right, so let's roll our four dice. All right, so. Actually, we got two bullseyes right there. So that's two. All right. So two bullseyes, let's roll our wild shot dice. It's a nothing. So we can mark our two bullseyes down here in our bullseye tracker. Look at that. All right, so that was one set, right? Because we used all the dice. That was one set that was done. So now we can roll all four dice again for accuracy. Oh, we got our other bullseye. All right, and that is it. Let me just roll these because I want to see if I can get this bonus. Uh, No. It was close. I needed just a half circle. Uh, but we rolled another one of them. I'm not going to bother rolling the, the shot dice because we don't have to. Actually, I wonder if you have to. We'll roll it anyway. It's another bullseye. Uh, so basically, I hit him, right? I hit him. I uh, knocked him out good. I totally did not kill him. Um, he was just knocked out. So that was all three bullseyes. So a hit is card 50. So we'll see what that says. All right. So, uh, something sparkly. You, your shot is true. Bartle yell, uh, yelps as an impressive bump begins to swell in his rosy complexion. See, he's fine. He's fine. We didn't, we didn't kill him. We didn't kill him. Just a little hurt. I'll go. Please don't, he cries. Bartle retreats uh, with what's left of his dignity. To your surprise, um, you see that the ring's sparkly on the ground. The jackalope must have dropped it. You pick it up before anyone sees it. Oh, man. I feel like I should give that back. I feel like that's like the right thing to do, but I'm just going to pocket it. All right, time to go. Card 52. <laughs> feel like that might bite me in the butt later. All right, so. Let me just get that going. Um, okay. So, good fortune. Uh, as you come... 
As you come uh, across, or I'm sorry, as you cross Main Street and head west, you hear someone calling your name. Hildegard, it's all around town that you're carrying something of interest. Well, that's, I'm really not good at uh, doing this. Wouldn't that be a crazy crossover if, if uh, Sauron is just like, they sees me and he's like, I know what you did, right? You're kind of a jerk. <laughs> and that's how Lord of the Rings started. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm not really good at being sneaky, apparently, with what I'm carrying. You need to keep an eyes out and watch your back. It's about time you had you had a reading, suggests uh, Marin, the renowned local fortune teller. Standing in the dark doorway of her gypsy cottage, she urges you forward with a wave. I'm also pretty sure Marin is like from Spire's End, I think. I vaguely remember Marin as a character that you play this. All right. Okay, please don't curse me. Okay, as long as it's free. And I want nothing to do with her. Do I complain about prices? Is that something I would care about? Pricing? Kind of feels like it is. I think I'm going to do the okay as long as it's free. Card 54. Um, okay. Freebies. All right. So everything has a price. Your gold, your gold, give it here. Come once. Give her all your gold. I shouldn't have complained about the price. I really wanted that gold. You take a seat across from her. The room is dark and filled with smoke. Uh, shrunken heads and crackling skulls hang from the ceiling. Now hand over the package, she says bluntly, tapping her nails on the table. I thought I was here for my fortune. You ask, questioning why you ever stepped into this creepy place. Oh, that's not good. Uh, when can I leave? 55. All right, so let's check out what 55 says. Uh, the Madame's Rules. So, Marin raises her hands, and the dull yellow crystal on the table begins to levitate. Marin's body splits into three astral projections. All right, here we go. Pull and shuffle cards 56. There are three of them. Okay. Place all three face up in a row. See what it's like since I own Spires. And also, welcome, Magic. Good to see it. Yeah, this one, I like this. I like this a lot. It's like, like I said, it's more um, basic version. I would say as far as in, like an easier, more relaxed version. All right, place all three face up in a row. All right, so there is a printing error in this game. Um, there's supposed to be a dot on one of these, and there is no dot. So what we're going to do is we're going to roll a die. Um, and basically, we're going to say this is one card is like the half circle. The other half circle is another card, and the other one's a dot, right, which is like the actual card. Um, and I'll explain more in a second of, of what we're doing. So shuffling really doesn't matter, but all three cards are treated as separate targets. You may attack them in any order you choose. Uh, you roll shot dice normally on all three targets. If one is defeated, uh, flip that card over and look at the bottom right of the corner. If there's a, if it's, the, if it's there, oh, I'm sorry, look for a dot in the bottom right corner. If it's there, the real merit, not an illusion. Uh, if it's not, it's an illusion. Uh, the encounter ends after you find the real merit. Okay. So. Basically, the way this works, um, I think all the Marin cards are exactly the same on the front or the back, I mean. So you need three bullseyes to knock Marin out, right? And you get four dice for accuracy. So we get all four of our dice. Two sets, right? So we can re-roll it basically two whole times. We can use any of the dice patterns, and we have to get three bullseyes onto her. So we'll start with this leftmost card here, and let's chuck four of these dice and see how we do. Um... Okay, we'll keep this one and we'll roll the rest of it. Okay. That's one bullseye. Oh, geez. Okay. Um, we'll keep the dot and hopefully we roll a circle. No, we didn't get it. Okay, so we got one bullseye. We'll do a wild shot dice. Okay, that means that this one doesn't count anymore. <laughs> so uh, that first set, we got... No bullseyes. So we need to roll perfectly for this next set. So second set is a bullseye. We'll roll again. Okay. Close. Okay, so we're going to fail. Uh, we'll roll this really quick. So basically we got one bullseye and that's it. So it's not enough to knock her out. So nothing happens with her. Right? We're not going to do anything with her. We're going to now go on to this one. So again, four accuracy means we use four dice. Uh, two sets mean we can do two whole rolls. Uh, we'll keep this half. Use this half. So we have one bullseye. There's another half of a bullseye. Okay, two bullseyes. Sweet. And 
nothing. Okay, that's fine because we got two bullseyes. So we'll just mark two onto this card. And then now we do the second set, right? We start with all dice again. Uh, there's another half bullseye. Uh, okay, there's there's the last thing we need. So we definitely have it. I'll just roll the rest for funds. All right, so that's another bullseye. Sweet. Then we can roll the wild one. It gets nothing. So we knocked it out, right? So normally, you would flip this over, and there's supposed to be like a dot here. Uh, they had a whole thing with a printer. Apparently, like they, that printer thought it was an error, um, but it really wasn't. So again, what we'll do is if I roll this dot, it is the right card. If I roll this half semicircle, it is wrong. If this half semicircle is wrong, anything else will just keep rolling. Uh, okay, so it's wrong, and we've used that semicircle. So we have to try this card now. Same exact thing. All right, half. And Magic, at any point, if you have any questions, just let me know. All right, I'm going to keep that semicircle and that semicircle. Ooh, hey, here we go. Two bullseyes. Wild shot dice. Okay, did nothing. Two hits. You get a second set. Uh, there's our third bullseye, so we should be good now. Just keep doing it for funsies. All right. Uh, do I have to roll this? I, I think I do. Oh my God. If I do, that means I actually miss. Do I have to? Yeah, I think I do. That stinks. All right, so that means my my hit actually was a miss. Uh, that's what the X means. This isn't champions. <laughs> no, it is not. We were doing something different. So I did not successfully hit her. Uh, so I draw 58, which is a fail. But it's like champions, but different. All right, so... Oops. Uh, hold on, let's... All right, so card 58. Giving stormtroopers a run for their money. I know, I'm really good. All right, our failed fortune. Oops. All right, there we go. Cards, dice, play mat. I mean, that's what I like to hear. Uh, the illusions of Marin fa uh, fade away, leaving her seat across the table. The turret won't speak to you now. Uh, tabletop Jones. Hey, Jonesy. How's it going, man? Thanks for the follow. I appreciate it. Hopefully you're doing well, man. Uh, the tarot won't speak to you now. That's unfortunate. A mark is a good thing to have, and you need an instinct that uh, can't be taught. Sadly, child, you don't have that. Not yet. Please, I can do this. I won't let you down, as I've just failed. Um, I've decided to allow this to continue, but Hildegard, I sense trouble in the barrenness of Seacrest Cliffs. Watch when you enter the city. Uh, Crow, falls, Crow falls as well. The world is not a friendly place, understood. And lose all feats of merc marksmanship, which stinks too. So uh, this game is going really poorly. I've lost all my gold, and I've lost all my feats of marksmanship. So I head to the edge of town on card 59. All right. So next we have rations. It's setting in. You're about to leave Gray Oaks. Maybe one final stop at the mercantile? Um, I'm not even going to go because I just lost all my gold. I can't even buy anything. So you're approached by a shriv shriveled up woman uh, who looks like a date left in the uh, left to dry in the sun. You there? You a fisherman on occasion? Well then, I know a place where you can catch something for the both of us. A little fishing might not be a bad idea. Yeah, let's go. Let's go see the fish. Um, so that is card sixty. We have to pull out. Let's do our fishing. All right, you've got the touch. Uh, the partially Mummified woman leads you across Edgewater Bridge. I've tried here. Nothing bites you, grown. I need someone with a strong arm and the right touch. Cast all the way out to the cattails. I can't reach them myself. She hands you a fishing pole. The lure is in an odd black stone. Oh, is an odd black stone. It's heavy. All right, here it goes. Let's start fishing. Card 61. All right, so fishing is a lot like attacking. We're going to attack with fishing. Right? That makes sense. All right. So let's do the cattails. Um, so we need five bullseyes, four accuracy, four set, which is kind of nice. And plus beast. Now, the nice thing about these games is that once you actually know there's expansions for this game. So you're going to be tempted to get the expansions. <laughs> July, it's coming. Is it that late that's coming? I thought it was sooner. Man, I need to start keeping track of some of that stuff. All right. That was that. So we rolled one bullseye. Here we go. All right. Let's roll the rest. All right, there's another bullseye. Okay, so we only got 
one bullseye and nothing. So we have our one bullseye marker uh, down. So we have four total sets, right? So then we can roll again for the second set. Um, so we'll just mark that we did one set. So I don't forget because I have terrible memory. There's another bullseye. Oh, there's another one. Okay, that works good. That's two bullseyes. Three. All right, so that's one, two. So we have four total. And that was our second set done. So we're doing really well right now. All right, there's our half circle. Uh, there's the other half. So that's that's our fifth one. Let's see if we can get the bonus, which is six. Okay, now we missed that. Let's see what this wild one is. Nothing. All right, so we definitely succeeded at the very least. And we can roll one more set. <laughs> All right. Uh, ooh, oh, okay. That's a bullseye. All right, cool. Yeah, you can use that. I guess we'll keep that one. Come on. Nope. All right. So. It's probably zero. All right. So that is the six. So the gold star on it means that we get one of these uh, special trait things or whatever it's called. I, forgot, I already forgot what it's called. But we get one of them. So we get to pull a card 62, which is a catch. Beast knows wallet over the past few months, right? <laughs> you can't handle any of this. All right, the 10. The lure plops down in the water near the cattails. You feel a big tug and the line pulls. You have it. Reel it in. She says excitedly. It doesn't feel like anything alive. More like a lost boot or a tree branch. You reel in the old 10. <coughs> Excuse me. Give it here. The woman snatches it and... Uh, Prize it open. She dumps a handful of gold coins on the ground and begins counting. Yes, it's all here. She pulls off the fishing lure. This is yours for one gold if you want it. If you pay one gold, place the magnet lure in your inventory. I I don't have one gold. I lost all my gold. Could she take pity on me? Is that allowed? <laughs> Alright, so I like to catch an actual fish. I would like to catch an actual fish. I feel like we cheated in this fishing expedition. So we'll do card 63. All right, so you uh, head down to the tackle shop to buy bait. You'll need it to fish. Uh, two log keeps a spare fishing rod uh, for you behind the counter. All right, so you buy the bait up to three. Take a cube of the associated color, red, black, and gold. If you're broke, horseflies are free. All right, so we're broke. So we're, we're going to buy all three horsefly uh, lures with the three ones. So, And then we do 64 as our fishing lesson. Okay. Pull the three fish cards. They are 91. Okay, cool. Put them out in front of us. Your character portrait looks at... Well, she's just got a lot going on, right? It's, it's, it's a big adventure. She's a little worried, that's all. Uh, place one or more bait cubes on the fishing spot cards. All right, so we'll use all of our free bait on the, each one. Um, roll as you were during the encounter card. Um, basically, try to catch the fish, right? So the way this works is the back of the card shows what we can use. And we can only use a circle, a half circle, and a, a um, regular bullseye, right? So we can't use like those half circle with half dots in it. We're not allowed to use any of those. So we'll start with this one. We're allowed to roll four dice. You only have one set to do it. All right, so like for example, these don't count. Like I can't do anything with them. So we'll just hold on to a blank, I guess. Okay, we'll keep this circle because maybe I can roll a dot here. Okay, we didn't. One more chance to roll dot. Okay, we got the dot. So that's that's the bullseye. Oh my god. And the wild loses it. So we don't get that fish. I find it really annoying that you have to roll the wild. Yeah, you must roll one wild die. Alright, so we don't gain this fish. So let's try this fish. All right, um, here's the dot. We'll roll the rest and try to get the circle. All right, there we go. All right, we got it. We might as well keep dot, uh, going just in case we... Well, it doesn't matter because we won't get it now. All right, so nothing. So we actually do get this, right? We use our fish. We turn this card over. And hey, it's a sunfish. Uh, so we use the horse... We could use any bait, which is fine. A sunfish uh, will bring you luck. Remember, during face-off, only one wild shot. Um, oh, okay, so basically we can now use the gray wild shot dice which is this one right so we've been using that black one now we can use the gray one instead as well 
So that's cool. Uh, the big difference with this is that it has a new symbol on it that looks like that. Which means we can reroll one shot die of our choice. So we can use these two now, which is pretty cool. And let's do this last one too, see if it's anything good. Maybe it's something of worth. Uh, okay, we got the bullseye, which is sweet. Okay, that's probably not great. Okay, okay, that doesn't really help. Um, Alright, that was nothing. Alright, cool. So we succeeded. Uh, we used a red cube on it, so we don't get this because it doesn't have the red cube in the top right corner. So, All right, so that is that. We get rid of that. All right, so we did all the fish. Um, fish, then leave the gray uh, oaks, which is card 66. All right, so. Now we're at the crossroads. Um, oops. The road ahead forks into two. An old sign marks Hickory Hills to the right and Pointy Peaks to the left. Both will eventually lead to Crow Falls and from there to the coast. But you're not sure which to take. A crow lands on the right side of the sign. Maybe the crow knows the way. But then another lands on the left. Then another. Ah, stupid crows. Uh, they start to call at you and ruffle their feathers furiously. These birds look angry. All right. Angry birds. Cool. Uh, they start to call. All right. So one of them leaps in the air at your direction. Oh, they're going to fight me. They're fighting. They're the fighting birds. So 67 and 68. All right. So the way that this works, let's see if this shows up. We're actually going to like do battle now, like up front or up close. Escape from Mount Grom. Oh, geez. If you at least caught something, that's great. I'm worried you die of hunger. <laughs> All right. So um, this is going to be hard to show. Yeah, it doesn't really show well. So a crow, we have to get seven bullseyes, and we can use this combination of things, right? And we can use three dice. That's our hit accuracy. The way our card works is it shows, or I'm sorry, that's their hit accuracy. Our hit accuracy is four. There's a win and lose, like what card we use, and they're going to do damage along this track. So let's put the hit crows out here, put us over here. So basically, they're going to attack us, and we're going to attack them, and it's going to be a whole thing. Um... So I roll dice like I normally do, and then after I'm done, the crows go, and they hit me along this track that's that's down here at the bottom, and they have to get certain kinds of dice, and you you have to do it like you would really be trying, like the crows would be really trying, um, like you can't like purposely make them dumb or anything like that. So let's roll our four hit dice. Um, okay, can we use a circle? We can't use a circle. Ah, uh, that stinks a lot. All right, we'll just keep one. Roll the rest. All right, there's a half circle to hopefully get a hit on. All right, there's the other half circle. Okay, cool. Oh, jeez. Okay. Well, last one doesn't really matter. So we have one bullseye. Okay, we have to re-roll a die, but it doesn't matter because both of them were circles anyway, so it doesn't make a difference. Uh, so we do get one hit on the crow. So we have one bullseye out of the seven needed. So now... They are going to roll three against me. They have to get a white semicircle, a black semicircle, a white circle, a white dot, white half circle, a uh, white dot, white half circle is the order in which they have to do things. So they roll two of the ones they need, the two hits. So we're going to do one damage, two damage, and then now they're trying to get a white circle. Uh, and they don't get it. So they got two hits on me, which is not good, right? We don't want to like lose already because that'd be embarrassing. All right, four attack again. There's our half circle. Uh, okay, we got a hit, which is good. Uh, there's another half circle. Okay, not quite what we wanted. All right, but there's another bullseye. So that's two more bullseyes put on. So we're up to three. And like before, there was limits of how many rounds there were, right? You're trying to do like two rounds, three rounds. This just keeps going until we win or lose. All right, Crow is trying to get a white circle still. <coughs> so it's going to keep this white dot because this is a chance for it to attack us. Black semicircle, white dot. Okay, we keep the white dot. There's no white circle yet. All right, so they don't get anything, right? They actually just stole three white dots, but they have to get that white circle first. All right, so we'll keep these. Actually, what we're going to do is keep that and that. Uh, jeez. Okay. Um, so that was that. Okay. So we rolled one bullseye. 
So they're up to four damage. Okay. They roll three. Uh, okay. Still not what he needs. That's good. He needs a white circle. Oh, there he is. So we got one, two already. So then he needs a white half circle. And didn't get it. So he's kind of beating us pretty good. There is a way to block and stuff, but I just haven't done that. I probably should have. Actually, no, I couldn't have, but that's a whole other mechanic that we don't have to worry about right yet. Uh, this one doesn't work. So we'll hold on to the white dot. Okay. Actually, this works. This is a whole bullseye that we got. So that works well. And that's a half circle. That's fine. And there's another bullseye. Cool. That's two more. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, we're almost there. I almost bought some Arkham the other day as well. Oh, you should have. Get into it. Back at the plane, got my butt kicked. Diamond's Edge, didn't you do the whole blob scenario recently? All right, half circle, no, dot, no. Okay, we'll just keep one of these, doesn't matter. Just got to do a half circle. Still no. And regular circle. Okay, so he does nothing. All right, we're going to take out this stupid bird. Um, keep that. Ugh, okay. All right, no. Does oh no? Wait, that one doesn't count. But hopefully, I didn't mess that up before. All right. Oh, there's our bullseye. Finally, on the wild. All right, so we knock out the bird. We win. We draw the card seventy-three. Buying Carcosa Mythos packs. Hey, let's go. Well, less said about Arkham Knights. Oh no, that's that doesn't sound good. <laughs> Was the event bad or just uh just you played poorly? <laughs> All right, so we succeeded, so we win. So that is oh, we get a star before I forget. Which we're up to two. Uh 73 is is our winning card. All right, 73. Here we go. There we go. <laughs> All right. Pluck the lock. Free of the birds at last, you start plucking the pointy black feathers out of your hair and clothes. For a brief moment, you're able to sit in peace before you hear it. Something or someone is rustling behind you. Do you have the conversation card? No. I don't think we talked. No, I don't. Oh, that's sad. I want to know what that does. All right, so let's draw 74. Uh, I feel like that's not great. I'm getting attacked. All right. Hurling husk. It's rather suddenly you're hit in the back by something hard and blunt. The blow knocks you over. You turn to see a scarecrow, not 10 feet away, hurling corn husks at you. This must be an enchantment to ward off those rabbit crows. Why, why didn't he do his job before? With all the feathers lying about, this one must be a little confused. Pull cards 96, 97. Okay. And then attack 75, 76. All right, so what's our card pulled? Oh, that's this whole thing. I remember this now. All right, so 75, 76, we're at the pull. So 75, 76. All right, there's our card, and there is our Scarecrow. So this one's a little different, because basically uh, this, this card's going to rotate, and it's going to affect the game slightly. Um, this, this part gets a little confusing, but... So the image has it upside down. You're supposed to start in wild like this. Uh, that doesn't make sense to me, though, so I start wild this side. Uh, layout cards, 75, 97, 76 pictures below. Uh, at the end of each of Hildegard's turn, cur uh, turn card 97, counterclockwise, starts with wild. Um, which I guess you're supposed to do that, so it's hit first. I don't know. Uh, for each circulation, add one to hit. Um, so we'll get into what all this is, but basically there are status effects on the side here. Wild is you may reroll a wild shot on set. Um, so it's, it's affects the game, right? So I can reroll a wild shot. Tame is no wild shot is used. Flub is minus one shot dice in the next set and hit is hit on face off Hildegard's hit meter. Um, so they just do a hit to me basically. Which of things with the sound bites faster than I ever did? <laughs> if it was Halloween. Ah, yeah. Well, it's like just past Halloween, so it's close enough, right? Yeah, the wood, the wood chippings uh, do burn quickly with those, those sound things. <clears throat> it's how I keep you all uh, around. Okay. 
So, we have to roll four dice. Okay, this is a bullseye. I did not roll that properly. All right, let's keep that. See if we can get another bullseye out of it. Nope. All right, so we got one. Oh, wait, what's wild? May re-roll a wild shot dice. Okay, we're going to re-roll this one. It didn't matter. All right, we got another bullseye, though. So we got two hits, which is cool. So what is it, after our turn? Yeah, we'll go this way. So it's going to be tame next. All right, he's going to roll three dice. Um, I guess I'll keep the half circle. Okay, that doesn't really help him either. He needs a regular circle. Okay, so he didn't get anything. So, loser. All right, tame means no wild shot dice. So you do not roll a wild shot dice. Okay. Um, all right, we'll keep that one. Uh, shoot. All right, we'll keep that one. Oh, does that count? Yeah. Okay, so that's another bullseye. So up to three, we don't do the wild shot dice. Hopefully, I keep thinking, I keep like worrying I mess up on those rolls because uh, I keep forgetting that's only certain ones. So if I messed up, my apologies. All right, there's the circle. So he does one damage to us. Now he needs the dot and then a black semicircle. Okay, so we'll just take that one. Okay, nothing. All right, so it does one damage for me. Cool. So the way blocking works is if I roll a dot, like on these red ones, or like whatever the red one is, if I roll that, I could put a blocking cube there. So it's like I get an extra hit, um, basically. Oh, shoot. We did tame, right? So we have to do flub. Minus one shot dice. So we only roll three this time. All right, so for example, we can use this one to put the block up there, which we're going to do. Then we're going to keep also this wet white semicircle. Okay. So, all right, we didn't get any damage though, which is the only thing that stinks. <laughs> Next is going to be hit. So they're just going to hit me this, this time. Um, all right, it needs the white dot. He's also going to need that one. Um, none of this really helps him. Okay, so he didn't get what he needed. It's my turn. Uh, which he does the hit, which is going to take off the block, right? The block is a little weird, but basically that's the general idea. So, uh, what semicircle? Good. Oh, wait, we have a bullseye. <coughs> so we'll just roll another one. Hopefully get another white semicircle. We did not. Got yeah, nothing. All right, so that's a hit. And um, this turns. Okay. So this is also a lot like Spire's End. Now oh, there's the damage. <coughs> Wait, there is a lot of dice rolling at times. Okay, doesn't help. Doesn't help. Okay, cool. Hold on, excuse me. <coughs> Jeez. All right, so now it's wild. So we may re-roll a wild shot, uh, shot sight or shot die. Oh my gosh, none of this helps. Um, okay, I'm going to use the wild right now. <laughs> okay, I rolled the same exact thing. I guess we'll keep that. Keep that. Um, okay, we'll keep that. I need the dot. Okay, I didn't get anything. Holy cow, this is really bad. It's like really bad playing. All right. He needs the black semicircle. Did not get... Oh, wait, he needs this one eventually. All right, there is the black semicircle. So he moves up one more hit. Needs one more black one. Does not get it. Um, oh, I should have turned this. So now we're on tame. So no wild shot. All right. There's a hit. Mm, get the blank, I guess. I don't know. We'll keep the this one. Duh. All right, so we can use this one as a block. And we don't use the wild one. It's next to me, Flood. All right. He rolls three. None of them really work. 
So now it goes past my shield thing, but he's still got to roll the black one, which he doesn't succeed. All right. Uh, oh, wait. No, we're on flub, right? Minus one shot dice. There we go. So there's one of our bullseyes. We're almost there. Almost there. Holy cow. Oh, my God. We missed. Actually, I shouldn't have rolled the black one. I should have been rolling the gray one, but whatever. All right. So hit. He's going to hit us next time. All right, so that moves him up one spot. Uh, we'll keep the blank. And that's a hit. So only two more hits and I lose. Hey, that's cool. All right, so now hit. He's going to get an automatic hit on us. There's a bullseye. I'm just going to keep all of that. All right, two bullseyes. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, cool. He gets a hit on us. He just needs the white half circle. We gotta lose like right off the bat. He needs the one half circle. Okay, so far so good. Nope, he got it. So that's seventh hit. We have lost this scarecrow. Uh, eighty-one is losing. Holy cow! I, I'm gonna be honest. I've never lost against this scarecrow, and this is embarrassingly bad. All right. Um. All right, what did I say it was for the Scarecrow? Uh, 81 was a loss. Which is just like, ah, oh, you lost the game. Did you lose against the Scarecrow? <laughs> uh, head for the Hills. The Scarecrow's attacks were fast and deadly. Another hit and that would be it. Uh, when did you climb up over the fence and race into tall corn stalks? Uh, hurled husk cut through the field like a sickle. You drive down on all fours, trying your best to escape undetected through the stalks. Eventually, the enraged uh, scarecrow stops and attacks and stops the attacks and goes dormant. It looks like the scarecrow has ultimately decided your fate. It stands beside the path of the pointy peaks. You aren't going to risk another attack uh, for a mountain hike. So, Hickory Hills it is. All right. So, this is 98. Um, that is actually the end of the chapter, which is interesting. So, that is the end of chapter one right there. <laughs>